Hey guys, it is Cheesy here, and today I am bringing you my PC setup video. So it came in about last week, and I've been playing it so much that I haven't been able to, you know, make any videos. So let's get straight into it here. I'm going to show you guys my PC, and here you can see the Bitfinex Neos case, a really good case. It is really customizable too, and you can put basically anything you want in here. So my PC specs will be on the screen right now. I'm going to go over them quickly, not too in-depth. I will do some benchmarking videos in the future, but... So, the AMD FX 8350 processor. Um, a very good processor with 4 GHz and 8 cores. Um, it, can, it can be compared to the Intel i5-4460 or the Intel i5-4690K. Now, it is better than the i5-4460, and it is cheaper by $40 than the 4460. But it is not as good as the Intel i5-4690K, which is about $80 more expensive than the 8350. So, um, if you have the money, definitely get the Intel Z97 motherboard with the uh, 4690K. But if you're looking for a cheap, well not necessarily cheap, but if you're looking for a um, $200 processor that will do the job, then the 8350 is really good. now. Um, there are some other really good AMD processors that I might upgrade to in the future, but I'll talk about that in a later video. So, my graphics card. The EVGA Super Super Clocked uh, GeForce GTX 960. Um, I was thinking of getting in a 750 Ti, but the 960 can run most of your games in Ultra, and it's the cheapest um, uh, card in the 900 series, because it's the oldest. And despite wanting a 980 pretty badly, this is still a really great card, and compared to console gaming, it's like nothing else. So my motherboard is the Asus M597 something R2.0. Um, it's a really good motherboard, it's around $100 in terms of price point, and uh, for that price it's a really good motherboard. It's one of the best motherboards for AM3 slash AM3 plus sockets. Um, and, you know, if you're going to get a FX processor, this is the right motherboard to get. However, you're going to be stuck for some years because um, they're going to release a new line of motherboards and stuff and, like, chipsets and stuff. But that will be in three years, so obviously you'll need to upgrade in a couple of years. So anyway, um, then we've got the other stuff like um, one terabyte of hard drive, um, one terabyte of Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Um, I'm going to add an SSD in the future. Um, 8 gigs of RAM, I don't know my brand because they didn't have the, they did not have the Kingston, no, they did not have the G-Skill one in stock, so I just got this random 8 gig one. Um, but yeah, it's 8 gigs. Uh, if I had the budget, I'd get another 4 gigs and make it 12 gigs, or if I even had, like, the even bigger budget, I'd get 16 gigs, because 8 gigs is kind of the bare minimum for PC gaming right now, not necessarily work. So, uh, what else is there? Oh, right, so I have a 600 watt Thermaltake power supply. Um, the Corsair one was like $90 and the Thermaltake one was like 50 so I'm not gonna spend, you know, 40 more dollars just to get a Corsair brand power supply. 600 watts is 600 watts. So, um, what else? So, I have a, I have two case fans in there, so I got rid of the default ones that came with the Bitfinex Neos and put in some red LED ones. I'll show you them if you, uh, I'll show I'll show you them later. And um, I have a Zalman Pure Copper Performa cooler. It's just a $20 cooler, but you can definitely hear it. I'm going to be quiet for a sec and put my uh, microphone close and s let's see if you can hear it. So yeah, you probably heard that. You almost certainly did. All my friends can hear it on Skype. Um, so you know, it's definitely doing its job, and it's not like I'm, I overuse it. Now, I don't put any FPS caps, and I get about, well, I'll talk about benchmarking later in another video. So, that's about it. So, did I cover everything? Cooler, processor, video card, RAM. Cooler, processor, video card, RAM, motherboard. Yeah, I think that's about it. If I forgot something, I'll feel really terrible, but I think that's about it. I'll add something in if I didn't forget. I mean, if I forgot. So... Now I'm going to be right back, I'm going to show you guys the red LED, I'm going to go turn off the lights and stuff. It's not too dark, but you'll still be able to see it. It might just be a photo, but I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see, you've got the two fans at the front um, with red LED. Here I zoom in to let you see a better um, 
picture. Now, they are pretty good fans. They do cool my CPU better than the normal case fans. Okay guys, so you just saw my LEDs. Those were just $12, so it's a really good addition if you want something nice to look at. And they do, they are Cooler Master fans that go at 2,000 rounds per minute. But anyway, here's my mouse. It's the Logitech G300S. Um, it's one of their cheaper gaming mice. It's only $40. It does the job, like honestly, for an entry-level gaming mouse. I'm not sure about its DPI. I really don't like its ambidextrous design. Like, the thumb rest on the um, right side of the mouse, where, because I'm right-handed, like, it feels weird putting the right side of my hand there. Like, it just doesn't feel right. And, like, the thumb rest is, like, really big, in my opinion. Whose thumb is, like, that's, like, an inch right there. So, I don't know. It just really feels weird. But I want to upgrade to the Razer Death Adder because it's an extremely comfortable mouse. My friend has one, and I used it. And, like, it, you know, the first time I used it, I just like kind of fell in love with it. So, unfortunately, it's like 80 bucks to 90 bucks. So, it's an investment, but it's worth it. Now, I was thinking of getting the Logitech G502 Pro TS Core mouse, but, and it is cheaper, but it doesn't really look comfortable. And I know people say it's comfortable, but I want to be certain about something. And with the Razer Death Adder, I am. And I am a Logitech fan, but I know maybe they, they need to make a comfortable mouse, like an ergonomic mouse. Okay. okay, so I use the Blue Snowball as my main microphone when I'm doing um, like narrations, like not live commentaries. Because sometimes it's hard when you're playing a game, you have to like kind of really talk into it to get the full volume. This is a condenser microphone, meaning it it's only supposed to pick up like one voice at like a certain time. Like it's kind of complicated, but you kind of really need to talk into it for it to, for you to get the full, full kind of audio in it. So here we have a Steam card, $20. I refunded some of my games, so I'm going to get $45 in my Steam wallet, and then I'm going to get another, with this I'm going to get $65, and I'm looking to buy Grand Theft Auto V, and considering I'll have $65 in my wallet, my Steam wallet, then um, on the Steam sale that'll be great, so, and that's coming up, so yeah, that's good too. Alright, so my headset, it's on my monitor right here, is the Logitech G430. I got it on sale at Amazon for just $60, and considering its normal price point is $80, or even $90, it's really good. Um, it doesn't have G keys, um, like not programmable, like, it doesn't have stuff that you, like, buttons that you can press, but it's still really good, and if you get the right settings on it, it'll sound amazing, and the mic quality is apparently perfect as well, so I use this for live commentaries and stuff. Okay, so now my keyboard, I'll get to my monitor last. It's a Logitech K32 something or something. Yeah, well, um, it's not a gaming keyboard. It, uh, what am I trying to say here? It, it honestly cost me $10. It was on sale from $25. It is spill resistant, so in case, you know, you're drinking your Mountain Dew or whatever, then and you spill on it, it might get sticky, but it will not fry or anything. Um, and also the keys are nearly silent. Like, I know you can hear that, but obviously you won't be pressing it that hard. See, if I press it, you know, slower, you can not hear it. So, um, it's a really good keyboard. You know, I'd recommend getting it if you need a keyboard, like, if your old keyboard broke and you really need to find one. But if you're looking for a good gaming keyboard, I don't know, you should look in. I'm probably going to upgrade to the Steel Series Apex Raw or the Razer Deathstalker or the Logitech uh, G105. So, last but not least, my monitor. Now, I used this monitor for a while. It's really old. It has a five millisecond response time. It's at like 59.89 hertz or something. So, 60 hertz, oops. Um, it's, let me get a better picture on the screen. I'll be right back. Uh, all right, so, my origin. All right, so here's a better picture. It's my wallpaper. Um, the resolution on this, um, monitor is actually 900p when i looked it up it said it's actually it said 720p but it is actually 900p which is actually really good for a starting monitor that i didn't have to pay anything for i just recycled it from my console gaming but i will however upgrade to a two millisecond 60 hertz benq 1080p monitor and i know a lot of people say 60 hertz means just 60 fps but the human eye can't tell the difference past 30 fps so yeah, guys, um, that's about it. Um, I won't leave any links or anything in the description. If you really want to know, though, just, like, comment or something. So thank you guys for watching. This video is way too long, so I gotta go.